An article published this week in AJR looked at clinical outcomes after resection of subsolid lung nodules. Rather than classifying nodules in a binary way as pure ground glass or part solid, the pure ground glass nodules were further categorized as either truly pure or heterogeneous, with the latter group showing an area of density, but not quite as dense as part solid nodules. At resection, the rate of invasive adenocarcinoma increased progressively from pure ground glass to heterogeneous ground glass to part solid nodules. The five-year recurrence rate, as well as recurrence-free and overall survival through seven years of available follow-up, also increased progressively across the three groups, and no pure ground glass nodule had recurrence at five years. The authors conclude that surveillance is appropriate for truly pure ground glass nodules, that heterogeneous ones have worse outcomes resembling outcomes for part solid nodules, and that both of those latter two nodule types should be referred for surgical resection. I'm Andy Rosenkrantz, the Editor-in-Chief of AJR, and I'm here today to discuss the article with its senior author, Dr. Mark Hammer, Assistant Professor of Radiology at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Dr. Hammer, thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us about your lung cancer screening practice? Absolutely. So um, we are a relatively large lung cancer screening site uh, here at the Brigham and with larger uh, practice throughout all of uh, Mass General Brigham's uh, multiple sites. Um, and so, you know, we in our part of that practice read somewhere between seven and 10 lung cancer screening CTs every day. Uh, we certainly see subsolid nodules detected at lung cancer screening, um, although we also have a pretty large uh, thoracic surgical referral service that gets brown glass subsolid nodules from multiple community sites in the region. At the start of the article, you say that there is a discrepancy regarding how to approach ground glass nodules. Can you explain that discrepancy to us? Yeah, that's a really great question. So when you look at a lot of guidelines that are out there, um, they certainly kind of um, distinguish, firstly, in a binary fashion between ground glass nodules and part solid nodules. And they tend to imply uh, basically follow-up imaging alone as the appropriate management for pure ground glass nodules. And when I say guidelines, I'm of course not only talking about the American College of Radiology's lung grads guidelines, but also the AJCC clinical lung cancer staging guidelines, uh, which for clinical staging purposes regard pure ground glass nodules as either in situ or minimally invasive cancers, um, and, you know, not stage one, two, et cetera. Um, and they use the solid size of the solid component um, to determine staging from clinical perspective. Um, this is in contrast to a lot of emerging data from multiple groups across the world that have shown that resected ground glass nodules, even pure ground glass nodules, uh, have a, you know, a reasonable fraction of those represent invasive adenocarcinoma at pathology. And the problem, the challenge is here, what is the uh, treating clinician to do? Because clearly the standard of care for an invasive adenocarcinoma would be surgical resection, at least for patients who are able to undergo surgery. So that is in, you know, in contrast with or in conflict with the idea that pure ground glass nodules should simply be surveilled. And so the real question that arises here, um, since we know that in general, lung adenocarcinomas that have ground glass components, either pure ground glass or part solid, those have more indolent behavior than fully solid adenocarcinomas. The question that arises is really when should we be pulling that trigger to uh, push patients to have definitive uh, surgical resection? For your study, how did you define heterogeneous ground glass nodules? That is another good question. This was uh, done by two uh, thoracic radiologists who were blinded to clinical outcomes and pathology. Uh, we reviewed these cases independently uh, and then arrived at a consensus. And our working definition was the presence of increased density within a ground glass nodule, either focally or diffusely, that was not as dense as pulmonary vessels. Uh, 
the standard practice, I think, amongst many chest radiologists has been to define a solid component as being a region in a ground glass nodule that is as dense as pulmonary vessels in the adjacent lung parenchyma. So this is a sort of intermediate uh, density between those two, uh, where we defined it as a heterogeneous ground glass nodule. And about what percent of ground glass nodules were heterogeneous? So if you look in our study um, at the total ground glass, if you add in, add up what we call pure ground glass and heterogeneous ground glass, and consider that as a as sort of a, a the bucket, then about two thirds of those nodules we classified as heterogeneous ground glass. I think you know there is obviously a little bit of a gray zone between this and uh, part solid nodules with small solid components. You could imagine that you know, another radiologist might classify some of those as heterogeneous ground glass nodules rather than part solid. So I think this percentage is going to vary a little bit based on um, clinical practice, but I think somewhere in, in terms of two thirds, in terms of nodules that went to resection. So remember, we aren't looking at all ground glass nodules, um, the universe of all ground glass nodules, because many small pure ground glass nodules are, are simply being surveilled by follow-up imaging and, and would not have been included in our study. And you looked at recurrence really from all different ways. Can you comment further on this part of the analysis? Right. So we we broke down the patients into several different groups to try to understand, um, you know, the interaction between this nodule density classification, pure heterogeneous uh, ground glass and part solid, um, and other important parameters, for example, nodule size, um, and invasion of pathology. Um, and what we found was that, uh, so there were no recurrences in nodules that were less than one centimeter, regardless of the density. Um, but above, of nodules above one centimeter, there was a progressive increase in rates of recurrence from pure ground glass, which had no recurrences, um, to the heterogeneous ground glass, to the part solid. Um, similarly, we also looked at invasion at uh, pathology. So um, patients who were classified as minimally invasive or um, uh, in situ cancer versus those that were classified as T1 or T2 tumors, that is an invasive component larger than five millimeters. Um, and we saw a similar um, sort of uh, progressive increase. So um, again, there was no, um, there were no recurrences in the minimally invasive and in situ cancers in the pure ground glass group because that had no recurrences in any uh, type of pathology. There were no recurrences in the heterogeneous ground glass nodules that had minimally invasive or um, in situ carcinoma, um, but there were a few recurrences of part solid nodules that had minimally invasive pathology. Um, and then within the invasive adenocarcinoma group, um, in other words, more than five millimeters invasion at pathology, there were again, no recurrences in the pure ground glass group, but a progressive increase in recurrence rate with the heterogeneous and part solid nodules uh, in, that, in that category. And how does this study differ from prior work trying to classify ground glass nodules? Yeah, that's a great question. So there have been a large number of, maybe not a large, decent number of studies looking at, um, you know, trying to predict basically invasive adenocarcinoma from a subsolid nodule or from a ground glass nodule. Um, and, uh, and those are important studies, but the challenge with those, uh, as we see here, is that maybe there was invasive adenocarcinoma, but did that really impact the patient's long-term outcome? Should we really be resecting those nodules? Um, so those studies, I think, are, while very important for the literature and our understanding of these nodules, don't really get at the key question here. There have been a few more recent studies um, in uh, coming out of China and Japan that have started to look at clinical outcomes after resection um, when they are subdividing ground glass nodules. Um, a number of those studies have used other windowing to evaluate the presence of a solid component, for example, using soft tissue windows uh, rather than lung windows. In our study, we did all the evaluation on lung windows alone. That's the Fleischer Society recommendation. And I think that is basically pretty standard clinical practice um, by thoracic radiologists across the country. Are you personally doing anything differently based on these results? Yeah, we are, at least a number of us in, the, in our group, are um, using the term heterogeneous ground glass nodule in our 
clinical reports now um, to help give a, a sort of heightened flag of alert to the thoracic surgical uh, referrers. Um, and our thoracic surgeons are also now, uh, they've participated in the study with us. Dr. Scott Swanson is one of our excellent um, lung surgeons and thoracic surgeons. Um, and so, you know, I think that working together, we're going to um, be more aggressive for uh, patients with where we consider they have a heterogeneous ground glass nodule. Can you just restate your final takeaway for our listeners who read chest CT in their practice? Yeah, I think the takeaway here is that not all ground glass nodules are the same. And as radiologists, we should be looking carefully at these nodules. And if we think that they start to develop an increased area of density, even if it doesn't you know, truly meet the criteria for a solid component, we should alert the referring clinicians uh, that this nodule is, is exhibiting a somewhat more aggressive biological behavior, and they should consider referring the patient if they're not already referred to a subspecialist and uh, start considering definitive therapy for that nodule. Dr. Hammer, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.